Um, the final presentation of the conference is to be given by Ma Yong Song, and it's a great pleasure to introduce him. Ma Yong Song is one of China's outstanding younger architects. Well, one of the outstanding younger architects anywhere, actually. He's founder and director of Mad Architects, a practice with offices in Beijing, Rome, New York, and Los Angeles. In his work, Ma marries contemporary, very contemporary technology with ancient precepts, and in doing so, attempts to forge a new balance between society, the city, and the environment. His goal, he has said, is to connect architecture to nature and create very emotional spiritual places for everyday life. In pursuit of this, Ma is, among other things, re-examining and reinterpreting the topology of the high-rise building. Ma studied in Beijing and then at Yale, where he gained recognition for his Floating Islands project, which envisaged a park floating above the site of the former World Trade Center in New York City. After working at Zaha Hadid Architects, Ma founded Mad Architects in 2006, in the same year that he designed the practice's breakthrough project, Absolute Towers, twin apartment buildings in Betsy Williamson's hometown of Toronto. A series of highly imaginative projects has followed in numerous awards and exhibitions. I won't enumerate all this work, it would take a bit too long. Suffice it to say that the work of Mad Architects, excuse me, is insanely good. After Ma's presentation, Christopher Hawthorne and Andrew Barry will engage in a short conversation with him. Please welcome Ma Yang Song. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure to be here in New Zealand. Um, my title is uh, um, Building Nature. I think it's a perfect place to talk about the nature because uh, um, you have a really beautiful um, environment here. Um, but in many places I talk about the same t topic, architects normally think we are building artificial world. We're building buildings that have nothing to do with the nature. Nature, we can preserve nature, but we are building um, um, artificial uh, objects. So there is a concept that uh, nature and the artificial, they're on the um, two end of the, the, the world. Um, but in my um, um, lecture, I want to talk about the possibility to combine these two um, closer. Um, we did one project in Beijing. This imaginary project is not a real. Uh, it's actually a rendering about uh, Tiananmen Square, which is the, the, you know, the center concrete empty plaza, a very political place, uh, into a forest. We put the trees there. Uh, so we, we think, uh, you know, by doing, bringing nature, um, we could uh, uh, not only, of course, introduce green in this uh, empty space, but also to turn the city into more uh, human and more friendly. Um, this is uh, to, to say that the nature actually has a social um, uh, meanings. Uh, when you look at the past, um, the gardens, for example, uh, nature could become a cultural uh, element. There's a two, there's a two image. One is a, is a garden in France. Another one is a, a Chinese garden. Uh, you can see the, the, the green, the, the nature elements, they, they act very differently. In, in France, a garden um, the, the green elements become more organized, more artificial. Uh, well, in the, in, the, in the Chinese garden, the trees, um, rock, and the water, they are you know, very organic, planned together as a whole experience, uh, even architecture. Architecture cannot uh, stand alone. It's also part of this uh, whole arrangement. So the experience, or let's say the emotional uh, feeling in this whole built environment, it's, uh, it's the most uh, uh, important thing. Uh, the nature also, or artificial in this case, is of course tree is a real tree, but how to plant this, how to position the rock, it's all um, human um, involved. Talk about this uh, um, larger scale, the city, New York City, and uh, Beijing, uh, the, the one, the picture on the, on the right is uh, 
uh, is Beijing, you see the forbidden city uh, with a lot of palace uh, inside. And then you see this green, uh, green thing. Uh, that's actually an artificial hill behind, north to the, to the forbidden city, where you can go climb up, you can see the whole uh, city. That's artificial. And then the, you see the, the water system, the west to the Forbidden City. Those are, are water system with islands, with a bridge. It, it, right now it's a park. Um, was also artificial plant. And the reason being that it looked like all, all nature, but was planned, uh, um, inten in, 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 intended to, to, to make the feeling that when you live in the city, uh, it's also feel you live in the in the garden. It's a, a larger, a large uh, garden. Uh, so there's no clear definition between uh, nature environment and the uh, artificial environment. This is quite a different um, idea from the West, where you, you see nature and artificial quite uh, um, separately. Um, and this modern city, this uh, was an image from uh, Le Corbusier, the, you know, everyone knows this, uh, a proposal for Paris to build these uh, high, to uh, high buildings um, to, to, um, to gain more sunlight, to give a, a, a space to, to traffic cars, and to, to gain more public space. Uh, this, of course, the, didn't happen in Paris, but that somehow happened in China. And uh, this image shows two images. One is Manhattan, another one is one city uh, developing uh, their CBD in China. Um, we're actually building many new cities like this. They, they, they're, they're looking for the American typology for, for this uh, um, modern uh, urban image. Uh, by building these tall buildings. Every building looks uh, similar, and they kind of um, uh, representing the, um, the, you know, the, the financial, the, you know, the, the power. <clears throat> this is also interesting comparison uh, for me. Uh, on, on the left, it's a, it's a shard building in London. Uh, on the right, it's a, it's a, a a tall building in North Korea. Uh, but they started earlier, actually, in North Korea. They, they wanted to, to be the um, Empire State Building in New York, but they, they couldn't continue the project for so long. Uh, but recently, they finished. But you can, it's the interesting thing is uh, two buildings uh, has a similar architecture language, which is a uh, pyramid. They have a peak pointing the sky. So that's a literally literally uh, translate skyscraper. And then I was wondering, I was thinking why they're building the similar architecture. Of course, the, on, the building on the left must be you know, uh, more expensive than this one, and there must be a green architecture, a green building, and such. Um, and then I was thinking, those kind of landmark buildings with a point, with a peak, uh, pointing sky. Usually, uh, there are churches, church in, in the in the past, uh, but now they become hotel and, and office tower. Uh, so, <clears throat> I think they're representing in these two cases uh, capitalism and power. That's a, somehow become. Um, that's destiny for most modern architecture today. Um, so Paris kept the, the classic town. The, there's a not much high-rise in the middle of the city, but they built a high-rise outside the city in La Defense. Uh, but we have to remember Eiffel Tower was the, the first tall building, the first tall structure built to to show the power that human can 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 use uh, steel uh, to to build um, this uh, incredible um, uh, structure, uh, and then later um, we think you know building the tall structure become a symbol to show uh, our our um, 
ability, and then they build uh, this black tower uh, years after. Uh, they call, um, uh, it's, it's called uh, Tower Montparnasse, uh, but uh, Paris, Paris people call this uh, Scarf uh, of Paris. And then we were invited to do a competition to change this tower last year. Uh, so I, I didn't uh, have an idea how to, how to change. One day, until one day, I was uh, inspired by this. Uh, that was a, a photo took uh, in Beijing um, last year when, when we have a very heavy pollution. Um, so when you have a pollution, everything looks so poetic. You, you don't see things clearly, uh, uh, including beautiful buildings and ugly buildings. Uh, so I'm thinking, you know, the best way is to to. Um, to, to bomb that building um, because that was a, a historical um, mistake. So we have to correct mistake, but they, they couldn't uh, let us to bomb. So, <coughs> so uh, I think maybe we can use the, this uh, way to, to make the building less visible. So we propose this to make a um, uh, use a, some uh, uh, Op, uh, optical uh, uh, material, the glass material, to, to use reflection to blend the building into the background more. And in this photo, you show the, uh, you also see the up, upside down uh, city as a reflection. So we, we because the, the, the way we use the glass, we, every piece of glass has angles. Uh, so, so, so you will see an uh, uh, upside down city floating on the top of the building, but the bottom is uh, um, disappearing. Uh, and then from certain angle, you will see Eiffel Tower upside down. And then we lose the competition. But, <laughs> but <coughs> we, well, I, that was funny that uh, we, there's a midterm review. Everyone seemed excited about this idea. They took in photos, oh, this is so exciting. Why don't you put the Eiffel Tower uh, street? I said, oh, you already have one. So next one cannot be the uh, same. My, my, my thought actually was uh, we should look at the Eiffel Tower again from different angle because uh, that's the starting point. We think building high is the, our goal. That's the destiny for, for our modern time, everything. Build has to be stronger, faster, bigger. So, so I think turning the black tower, which is everyone hate in the city, into um, self question. Uh, you know, ask uh, himself a question about should we uh, build a build a tower. So it, maybe we should uh, look at the the starting point again, and then blend uh, uh, myself into the environment more. <coughs> So that was a story about the high rise, and this one was uh, <coughs> um, my student work uh, back in 2000, uh, t 2002. Um, a proposal for the 9/11 um, uh, event. The, the, after that, the, uh, uh, many architects proposing for World Trade Center and uh, re re rebuild project. And uh, I was a student in school, so that was my proposal. I, many people think uh, we should build a, a more powerful or build a, a memorial to, to make the, um, the, the old Twin Tower um, uh, stronger or being um, uh, memorized. Um, but um, I didn't know you know, as, a, as a foreign student, I didn't really know the complicity in, the, in this event. So, so I did uh, something floating um, without knowing how to support it, without knowing the structure, etc. But uh, <clears throat> I was thinking maybe an uh, organic uh, island uh, floating in the air with uh, trees and a park on the top and then free up a lot of space underneath. So I call this a floating island. Uh, the project doesn't want to compete the height. But I didn't know how to explain this when I was a student. I just say, I want to relief. I don't want to, you know, not, not uh, going higher, but, um, but uh, horizontal. 
uh, and now I, because this kind of project never can be realized, so I think that's important to keep the practice more, you know, ideal, ideological. So I put this image in my office, uh, so I can look at this every day. One day, there's a, uh, there's a Chinese developer says, um, which project um, you, you, you really want to build, but you never uh, be able to, to build? I said, this one. He said, let's do it. And <coughs> he said, in China, it's, uh, it's possible. Then we have a meeting, two hours, then I realized he was talking about uh, this building in front. <laughs> I, I think <laughs> there's, a, there's a nothing wrong. You know, peop, some people like classic buildings. Um, you know, but, but I think when you go back to look at the history, now when we look, learn the history, you always want to find a piece that mark that point, the time, right? You, you say, oh, that's a, happened in that time, and then later, what, what's, uh, what's new happened? So, so that, that's, I'm curious, what's new can, can happen today? And then after, uh, later, we build this two residential building in outside Toronto, actually. It's a city called uh, Mississauga. Uh, Mississauga is, a, is a just 20 minutes drive from uh, Toronto. Uh, two residential tower. Uh, we win the competition for the, for the taller one, and then they give name, uh, Marilyn Monroe Tower, to this, to this building, and they sold out like in one day. Uh, and then they want to build uh, uh, the, the second one. They say, uh, you don't have to come, you just uh, use your drawing to build the same one. And we pay you twice. And then we say, no, you cannot have a two Marilyn Monroe. The, sa the same thing. Uh, we want, because the idea was that we, do, we, want, we, we, we want to do something organic, more natural, to, to be different from a uh, modern machine box. Uh, we don't want to repeat, so everyone has to be um, more unique. So we build uh, this tower uh, uh, on, on its side. So when you build the two tower, they start to have a dialogue and uh, to each other, and they, from different angle, they have a um, different um, relationship. Um, in this building, we don't have a vertical strength. Uh, we don't show the structure. We don't show the vertical strength. We don't show uh, the you know the um, the 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 very uh, the, the, the 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 strong elements, but everything is so soft, and then we only show the horizontal balconies. That's a space in between two towers, and they since they have a different shape, so they they can they can start to uh, dance together. So <clears throat> so that's what I think uh, to sum up. Um, I think uh, the, in the old city you have a church. Those are landmark buildings. They represent religion and the modern city. A lot of buildings they start to look too much about capitalism and power. So I think uh, the future. A lot of people think oh, we should talk about the people and community. I think probably we should talk about the, the relationship be, uh, ship between um, human and nature. Um, that's probably can mark the end of the industrial, industrial civilization. Because now we're in, still in the stage, think we can do uh, great things uh, more powerful than, than nature does. So, so now I'll give you several uh, um, uh, examples I, I, I tried. Uh, this is a very small project we built in Japan. It's a, it's a a kindergarten transformed from old house. So you see the, um, the, the white envelope, is, uh, I call this a white tent, um, covered an old uh, wood frame uh, structure from the old house. So that's a diagram of it. The, the story was uh, they, have a, this, they have this old house before, and they want to demolish and build a new, a bigger building for, for the kindergarten. Um, and there is there is an uh, argument between the fa in, inside the family that uh, the, the 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 younger the sons uh, I want the new building landmark building the father says uh, I want uh, my house I, I stay there forever uh, so that's a that's a proposal from us 
um, we, 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 we keep the, the half of the, 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 the old structure inside the new building. And then when, when we have the idea, and then when we go to the site, I found this is a very interesting um, topic, the Earth. Uh, the Earth, if we talk about the nature, what's the nature? Nature is not just the green trees, a flower. Uh, in this case, it's the, the land, they have a memory, they have a life uh, there. And when we start the groundbreaking, they have this ceremony, which is really moving. Only several people, but they have give a really formal um, ceremony for this uh, small project. Um, this, uh, this is students uh, going to um, in enroll the, the, the kindergarten in the future. Um, so they all come. And that's a building, when building finish. Um, I didn't want um, a very um, uh, uh, strong building. I want a soft building. Uh, that's maybe from my childhood. I, I, I hate uh, building look too, too hard. Uh, so this is a, more like a, a tent to me uh, in, in front of the, the rice field. So there's a three floor. The old, uh, uh, the old structure inside there is a two floor. So from the second level, you have uh, the staircase. Uh, you have uh, the, how do you call this? S slider? slider. You can, you can escape. <laughs> That's the entrance. It looks like a small cave. So that would uh, exciting, excite the uh, children. And that's a plan. You see the, the only uh, part, of, part of it is uh, it's old, uh, old building. <coughs> so that, uh, here you can see the, 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 the wood structure inside. It's, it's not a uh, real you know, um, old. It's um, uh, probably you know, 40 years old. Um, it's, um, but uh, for me, I think, you see several uh, old pieces of wood, but it's, it's not like a listed building or, or temples or a lot of people have some memories. But, but this person, this uh, parent, they have a memory. I think that's uh, somehow linked um, the space and architecture to human. That's uh, w w what is... Um, architecture about, I think. So to, to, to make the space uh, uh, look different, uh, but with a memory. So the future students, they, when they come and, and then uh, they graduate, they know where this uh, space come from. And that's the roof for the, uh, on top of the old building. Uh, we, we make it uh, a, a new library and the classroom. And that's, corner, that's a corner uh, with a round uh, window to look out to the rice field. Only kids can go there. That's, that's very low space. <coughs> so the building looked di very different from the neighbors, but uh, somehow emotional um, attached to the place. I hope that could become the new history for this village. And this is another project about the Earth. It's obviously um, look like uh, uh, undulating mountains, volcanoes. So when I fly here, I, f I see a lot of uh, volcanoes. I thought this project should uh, f fit here better. This is actually a sports center uh, in Quzhou, uh, in China, a city not far from Shanghai. And they're building um, big stadiums, swimming pools, a lot of these big uh, um, 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 projects. Then our idea was to turn all these uh, buildings into uh, sloping mountains so that you don't see the monumental buildings. You don't have a big plazas, but uh, you have a green and uh, landscape. And then people when people come here, they don't necessarily only for the match, for the games. Uh, it's not a, a place you feel a lot of um, you know, competition, uh, but a more like a, a joyable um, park. And people can climb those mountains. And every uh, mountain, volcano top, we have some programs so people can 
or walk around the volcano and then eventually reach the top and they can uh, look at the, the environment. So every, every mountain has a program in there. They have a natural light from the top, from the side. They have a natural ventilation, but at the same time, the facade become accessible um, um, green. Because it's very large, uh, large uh, scale urban space. Um, this is a, a stadium with uh, uh, 30,000 seats. Uh, also, the other seats are covered from outside this landscape. And, uh, <clears throat> and more than making a park, uh, we also want to make uh, a land art. So the building is not simply covered by green trees. Uh, we want to use a building to make an euro, an euro land art that everyone in the city can experience. It's not just for here for to um, to run to to enjoy the, the 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 green and sun, but they they will think, oh, this uh, um, this some force, mysterious um, atmos atmosphere embedded into into this park. So that's the project under construction right now. It's about the earth, I think, <coughs> which is uh, uh, important as, as, a, as a nature element. <coughs> this one also, um, uh, a kindergarten in Beijing. Um, um, you see there's a courtyard house in the middle. That's a listed building. Uh, but uh, the surrounding uh, buildings already uh, uh, towers, uh, some new modern buildings, because they demolished some courtyard. So <clears throat> that's a site. There's a, uh, there are several buildings we de decided to demolish. Uh, and then we build uh, this a single floor uh, um, space around um, the, the, the kindergarten, uh, the, the, the courtyard. But we, and then we ins insert several new courtyards, and then we covered uh, this space um, by uh, a new roof, which, is, which I call uh, the earth in this case. So the earth in, in this project is actually roof. Why is that? Because we, we, want to, we don't want to build a second floor, two, two floor building. Uh, it's what we give a pressure to the courtyard. So by doing the, uh, only the first floor, the ground floor, uh, we will occupy the whole site. Then we can use the roof as a playground for kids. And then at the same time, there's a tower uh, not far from the, 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 <clears throat> the courtyard, then we can connect the two projects. And this, this school, this kindergarten will, um, will, will start the school uh, this September. Um, it's under construction right now. So you see the re relationship between this new and old. The new is a, is a new, I don't want to use the old elements, but uh, scale, uh, scale is a small. Uh, of course, the plan is very big, but the height is actually lower than the, than the old house um, roof. And then when people go up, you don't have a buildings, but you, you have this uh, roof that you can run around, and then you can see the old, old uh, house from the roof. And this part uh, is some, some, some new classroom with a small, small room on top. <coughs> um, this is another one, a uh, museum uh, um, under construction in China. Uh, uh, it's a museum under uh, uh, island. So we, 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 instead of a building, a, a, a building on, on the island, we 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 build this museum as, as island. Then we build a bridge uh, to lead you to this island. So that's uh, when you arrive this uh, museum. Uh, you, you see several small hills. You can run up and run down. You can wandering around this. So you don't have necess You don't have to. Um, find the facade and door and ent enter the museum, uh, you could consider this whole place as a public um, plaza. 
in the water. So I think it's important to, to, to create this uh, surreal environment, but at the same time linked to the landscape around, because you see those island, uh, other natural island uh, nearby. And this building actually blend, uh, is a, uh, um, um, gently go into the water, like the, like the beach. You can, you, can, uh, you can walk along the water. You can climb it. So that's a model. Um, so that's another way we talk about Earth, because I think island, uh, every island is a mountain underneath the water. So it's, a, it's another form of a way uh, you connect to, the, to your, to your uh, ground. So that's an that's a island under construction. Um, this is another uh, project in Beijing. We, we have to talk about, uh, everyone talk about the historical thing today. Uh, we have uh, this um, old house, courtyard house in Beijing. But this photo shows quite a different feeling. We have uh, this beautiful wall uh, to show for the, for the tourists. Uh, but behind the wall, you see there's a uh, public toilet. Because all the toilets, they don't have a toilet. Private toilet, they don't have. They have a shared uh, public toilet. And the public space in between cars. <laughs> and the toilet uh, at the background. So I did a, this proposal. I call this uh, Beijing 2050. I was imagining you know, um, in the future, nobody will demolish the old building. Of course, we will keep the old building. But are we going to continue building the old buildings? No. But in this case, if they want the toilet, I bring in this uh, 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 bubble. This, this is a reflective object that's actually a toilet inside. So the idea is uh, to insert all these uh, bubbles into many um, courtyards or, 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 or corners. Uh, they become a new element um, with the new functions in, in there. I call this a black hole. I, black hole, for me, means the time shift. You know, you, 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 you see something, you feel doesn't belong here. <laughs> you feel this is so uh, out of the place. You see, there's a, not, a, not a, uh, even some people say this is a, not, a proper, not appropriate to be here. But when this happens, uh, the time, uh, the dimension of the time seems stretched. You have a historical things, you have a unknown strangers. There's some space in between for you to uh, start imagination. And then later we built one. There is a one guy saw our image, says it just doesn't have to be um, wait. We don't have to wait till 2050. We, let's do one. And then we build a one bubble as a toilet and we put in his uh, courtyard. It's a <clears throat> reflective material so that uh, um, it try to disappear into the environment. Uh, at the same time, you see uh, the sky, the, the trees, uh, the, the old building kind of uh, mirrored in this object but in a very weird way. It's so all, all twisted. It so doesn't reflect another reality, but uh, a, new, a new image. And this, when you look at uh, the courtyard uh, from the new building, you hardly see this new object because it's at the corner and it reflects the surrounding. Um, and then this image reminds me of a famous Beijing writer says the beauty for uh, courtyard architecture was about uh, emptiness. It's about the courtyard in, in which you, you have trees and uh, people's lives and uh, love. That's all about this architecture. It's not about uh, uh, individual buildings. So theoretically, you could, uh, there's nothing wrong. You can put a new architecture together with old to, to, as long as you, you, you keep the, the soul, which is the courtyard in the middle. And then this, uh, um, um, from the look, from the God view. Of course, you see different architecture. Um, but once you are in the space, I think it's a, uh, they start to talk to each other. And then we build another bubble. 
uh, this is much bigger, uh, in the desert, in the a city called Erdos, uh, Inner Mongolia. It's a city built on the Gobi Desert. So the first day I went there, it was empty. So I was imagining the uh, spaceship land on this uh, desert. And then I, I did this. Uh, <clears throat> the landscape become so successful. A lot of people, because we built this undulating um, sand, sand dune like uh, plaza, and people like to run, run up, run down, they lie there. Uh, a lot of people like to gather there because it's so un, un, um, um, it's, uh, it's a very different from any urban space. Uh, it's very interactive. Uh, but for me, I was trying to make something like a uh, scent. I think a desert was some uh, landscape that lasts forever in, on the earth, before human, after human. And then we build this uh, new, arch new ob object. And then these two start to dialogue, then uh, maybe something happened. So I didn't do any Mongolian architecture. Right? Uh, inside, uh, we have, uh, uh, of course, a lot of sunshine, wood, warm uh, um, space. Um, the, in the middle, there is a canning, canning lobby uh, space, like a, like a lobby with a two entrances on two sides of the museum. So you can pass through the museum without uh, going to any exhibition. And also, the visitors, after they tour one, uh, exhibition, they come back to the lobby through the bridge and they go to another exhibition halls. <clears throat> so inside this, uh, because it's all white, it's all organic, it kind of a blur the boundary of the space. You don't feel, you know, what's a shape, or what's, a, or what's, a, uh, what's uh, up, what, uh, what's down. So uh, then you, you see some deep holes, uh, the holes um, that remind you caves, uh, the canyon remind you the the landscape um, in, in the Gobi Desert, but everything looks so abstract. It's a white. It's nothing. You know, it's an, it's not real nature, but it ref it's um, it's using very abstract way to to talk about the nature, and then <clears throat> that's the black hole I was talking about. I think when people imagine uh, <clears throat> imagine this emptiness uh, and um, and the, the, and the desert been there forever, they will think about the time. So once you put the modern elements, people will quickly reference to some other things they, they've seen in the city. So that's why we don't have flowers, we don't have trees you know, around this building. This is another, this is a conference hall uh, now we're building in, in, in China um, next to a uh, snow mountain. Uh, so we build uh, this uh, building like uh, um, a big roof, look like a mountain floating above the, 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 the site. And uh, <clears throat> inside is uh, all wood and the warm um, feeling. It's, again, the space reference um, some landscape uh, character, but in the very um, uh, different ways. That's a model of it. <coughs> it's under construction. And this uh, a, a, com a complete project, we completed two years ago in a city called Harbin. Uh, it's, a city, it's the northern capital of China, uh, very close to Russia. And uh, we built this uh, <clears throat> opera house on the wetland next to the, the main river in the city. So you, you see, the, there's two parts of the building. One is a big opera, another one is a theater. They're connected through uh, this undulating uh, roof. And then we, we also designed the landscape around it with the bridges and plaza. The idea is to make this big building um, like a, like a hill and uh, and continue into the surroundings like 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 this is a continual line from the landscape from the river and then eventually ri uh, rise from architecture uh, become a building and then disappeared in the landscape again so it's important to blend in this building into the 
into the horizon. And this is actually a facade uh, for the opera uh, uh, where we, we, we insert a, a ramp uh, on, the, on the exterior facade. So when there's a, no opera uh, during the day, people can um, tour the building from outside. They can climb to the very top of the building. <coughs> That's a facade. And then once they re reach the top, they can see the sky. And there, of course, there's also a, a platform they can see the, the park, but I think it's important that um, uh, to make this space uh, more um, spiritual, they can um, more focus on, uh, on, the, on, on the emptiness. <clears throat> and, and then when they have the opera in the, in the evening, uh, the building glow from inside, and then you will see uh, this uh, <clears throat> floating, um, um, uh, building uh, facade, <coughs> and inside you, know, you have this wood shell to to contain the auditorium in in, in the middle, and with a with a, um, a lobby around it. And so the lobby space has a lot of natural light, but this this space is facing north, and uh, the uh, direct uh, natural light can always. Um, make make this space feel outdoor. So you, you will see also the, the landscape around you. <coughs> and, and build this uh, uh, wood sculptural uh, staircase on, on two sides of the auditorium where people can um, perform themselves before they enter the opera and people can look at each other uh, when, they, when they walk on this. And inside the auditorium you also bring in natural light from the back <clears throat> and, uh, and it looked like a big uh, instrument. It's a lot of a holes, a lot of uh, organic surface for acoustic reasons. And here when they have a rehearsal, <clears throat> so they, 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 they feel this, they're, very, they're in the very center of the space. <clears throat> All this wood, uh, they're... they're, they're um, well, I don't know how to call this in English. It's a, it's a local wood. Uh, uh, normally, the farmers use to make a furniture uh, in, in this region. So it, 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 don't, it don't dry too much. They don't shrink too much during the winter. Uh, so, so we can keep the good quality for the surface. For, the old, uh, for this uh, smaller hall, uh, we also have a lobby bring in natural light and it's all white without any, is a, with an empty wall uh, with a shadow projected on, on the wall. So a lot of uh, holes in, in this space uh, where you can feel that you can travel from one space to another, from one time to another. <coughs> fake mountain, fake hill. Fake hill, actually, Jia Shan is a, in Chinese translation, is a, um, in Chinese garden, you see those rocks people call fake hill because it's not real. But people see rock, they imagine much larger landscape outside. So that's why they call fake hill. <clears throat> and we did a several hill project. This one was built in uh, Huangshan area. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a hill side facing a lake. We built uh, those houses, apartment houses uh, on, on, the, on the hill. <coughs> so it, there are actually uh, um, 10 buildings. Uh, each one, we, we took a t topography, used these uh, contour lines to, to put all these buildings on, on top of each mountain. So each building is a different shape, different size. And they have to, um, they have to uh, uh, touch the existing mountain, and they continue. So the goal is to make the building like a, a growing mountain. So it's like a, you have a mountain, but you continue. So that's important. We took the topography from the side. And that's when the building finished. So each building, of course, they're artificial, but they kind of um, try to uh, continue from the existing mountain. Um, <coughs> Sometimes I think uh, it's, it's uh, look better without building, uh, because uh, it's like uh, 
very beautiful scenery uh, that I found in New Zealand as well. You see the lake and mountain, so beautiful. <clears throat> but the problem is uh, actually on this shore, there are already many, many development uh, because the cities are they're expanding. A lot of people has to move. So we, our project actually uh, contains, contains 1,000 1, units. It's a big project. And Originally, they want something like a Marilyn Monroe Tower because we built that before. They want, they said, let's have uh, those tall buildings because uh, neighbor buildings, they do this kind of a box along the lake. So I think uh, um, maybe, um, maybe it's, a, it's um, worth to try to how if we have to have uh, this uh, large development, how can we still make it um, um, friendly to the environment? So, so this one shows a section how we build a tower on top of the hill and then on the side of the hill, and we connect them. And then this is all the buildings finish. Uh, each building have a big terrace, and uh, each uh, floor plan, they, they look uh, unique. The, uh, the uh, curve lines, uh, they all come from the, the shape of the mountains. So that's why each floor plan is different. And uh, at the same time, we don't want the building to look so clean. Um, to, you know, uh, we want building um, uh, without clear geometry. So, so that's important. Each line looks like a freehand drawing. Um, they go in, in and out. You know. <clears throat> that's a fake hill. That's a, when you put a rock there, they compose the rock, feel like you can imagine a bigger world. <clears throat> There's another mountain. It's an architecture model, actually. We put in, in, the, in the concrete base in the office, look like a penzai, and then we put the water and the green in, in there. Uh, so uh, look, uh, it's small, but it could be any scale uh, like this. And then we build this one in Beijing. It's a two to office tower in front of a, a park. That, that's a Chaoyang Park, uh, the biggest park in Beijing. And then you see the building around. It's a very modern, a lot of towers. And we build a, this black tower. A lot of people don't like black. But uh, they, they kind of uh, uh, understand this building feels like uh, some kind of nature, uh, part of the park, instead of uh, building a, a wall, a barrier in between the city and nature. So. <clears throat> That's an interesting drawing, not from me, uh, from a Chinese a critic. He, he, draw this, he always, always draw uh, this uh, uh, traditional Chinese painting, redraw, but insert a piece of architecture in there, uh, modern architecture. In this case, he put our building, the black one, on the far right. It looks so fit. It looks uh, like a part of the drawing. Um, but he also put uh, other buildings like uh, uh, CCTV building uh, or other modern buildings in this kind of a drawing, it, it feels so um, different. So, um, but in reality, that's, that's a view from the park. Look, uh, actually, okay. Um, but in reality, in the city, a lot of people think uh, this is a, looks so out of the place. Um, it doesn't fit. Uh, the environment so well, like what we showed in, in that painting, then I was thinking maybe the environment was wrong. Something wrong with the environment. Because that painting kind of representing the cultural context in, the, in, in everyone's mind. That's why they, those uh, famous paintings exist. And then when the earth city involved till now, it's all changed. The cultural context changed. The context change. So, so when you try to convince something, uh, try, do something that I think fit into the context, but 
but it's actually not. Um, but I think it's a worth to um, um, still to show that uh, to call the uh, the context to, to call back the the old context. Well, actually, <coughs> oh, that's a, the um, construction photo. You see the structure, the fins, and the glass. It's a very complex uh, um, construction, but I don't want to talk about it uh, too much. Uh, it's, a <coughs> it's a very, very challenging. Um, but those uh, <coughs> vertical fins that are structural, also they're um, uh, like chimneys to bring natural air go through the facade, so every floor can have a natural ventilation through, through this chimney. Uh, it's a green building, it's a LEED 30, uh, 35, but I don't, uh, I don't, I often say it's not enough to be LEED, because uh, I see many buildings talk about the uh, nature from the sustainable uh, aspect, but not really creating some space for human and nature. So, so, I, um, so this is a lobby to in between two towers uh, with a natural light and the water in, um, behind the tower. Uh, we put a tower here because we want to put some uh, <coughs> smaller scale buildings behind, the, uh, behind this tower so it's, uh, the scale can be uh, more comfortable, like uh, valleys, like water uh, flows through the valleys. <coughs> uh, Los Angeles. Uh, we have a, we we're building one uh, small project in, in Beverly Hills. Um, so this is a, this is a perfect uh, case with a mountain and a beautiful house. Um, so when I go there, I think uh, oh, we have to build uh, this uh, uh, five floor um, mixed use building on the big boulevard, Wilshire Boulevard. Um, so I was thinking, how can we do this? Maybe we should uh, uh, split the building um, vertically so the, the, the half bottom become a hill and then we build a small building on top of it. Uh, so this is actually floor, uh, a fourth, uh, uh, fifth floor. Um, ground level is a lifted, transparent commercial space and the second level and the third level is also apartment with a green wall, it's a living wall, it's a quite a large living wall, and uh, uh, small villages on the, on the roof. Uh, I think this is my impression about the Beverly Hills. It's a house on the hills. Um, <clears throat> and then we also put the trees on the roof. So when you go up, um, those houses, they have a front yard, backyard, uh, gardens. So instead of uh, making um, urban box. I try to try to uh, break down the scale. Um, at the same time, in, in the in the in the uh, plan layout, we try to uh, create this uh, um, a courtyard in the in the center. So every family, uh, we put all the all the living room, kitchen facing the courtyard. So, uh, I mean, maybe uh, maybe they can share. Um, it's okay for them to see each other. Uh, and then when they go to the be bedroom, they have a privacy. And then this is a construction photos. So it's a big project uh, it's a, a compared to the neighbors, but we break, break it down to the smaller, smaller buildings. It's a, <clears throat> it's a wood, uh, wood uh, construction. Trees, also nature. So this one is a, uh, it's obviously it doesn't look like a tree, but it a, has a branches. Um, the branch. This is an office building in China. Uh, it's a fashion headquarter with a central atrium, and then each branch has uh, one um, uh, department. Uh, it's all about the uh, fashion design. So that's uh, uh, the structure. We only have uh, six branch and the six huge column to hold the, the building so that when we want the empty um, uh, the cantilevers we can have. So the ground level, you see, we have very, uh, we, we leave the whole building to free up the, the, 
the, the site for, for landscape. And on the upper level, we, we also can to have uh, the gardens uh, for multiple levels of a space. And then we can, we, it's, it's in the southern China, uh, it's very hot. And with, uh, so we put this translucent uh, mesh um, for sun shading uh, functions. So ground level is, a, is, is all, all nature, all park. And then you enter the office, you go up to every floor. Um, then you have uh, this central atrium, and then you have uh, gardens covered um, by the meshes. Those are, and then those are construction processes under construction. Um, we'll finish this year, I think, later this year. This is, they're installing these uh, sun shading um, devices. It's a translucent to, you can see out, but uh, it's a, it's a, when you see in, it's a little um, blurred. And the last, I want to uh, also talk about the sky. Uh, and this is a project also in Los Angeles, uh, right now under construction. It's a museum uh, called uh, uh, Lucas Museum of uh, Narrative Arts, sponsored by George Lucas, the Star Wars director. He was uh, donate all his collection and uh, build a museum uh, for st storytelling. So a lot of um, collections about uh, you know uh, uh, writings, uh, uh, comic books, costume, poster, all this, and then. The location is uh, next to the USC uh, University, uh, also the Natural History Museum. And this image shows part of the building uh, look like uh, a white cloud um, floating above you. So the building is like a little bit cantilever, and you can walk underneath uh, the building. <coughs> um, it's a... Um, it's very, uh, this image shows the, the city. Uh, the, the snow mountain is not that close, but uh, when you take, when you use a very long lane, uh, the image feels uh, very dramatic because you see the CBD, the towers, you see the, uh, the small buildings, you see the nature mountains on, uh, beyond. So I'm thinking, if we do a, a museum here uh, in this very dense area, um, probably um, we don't want to make uh, the boundary too clear. Uh, we don't want, want to even fix the building into the location. So I want the building even feel that can, can float, can, can move. At the same time, uh, you see the, the roof we create a roof with, um, a, uh, with, a, with a park on, on the top. So you can go up and then you, ha you can have a great view uh, of the surroundings of the downtown, uh, the museum, and the, uh, that's a, a Colosseum uh, in Los Angeles. And there's a park. So by, by building this building, where it's very long, uh, narrow site, we complete uh, this, this area by by making the, the central green kind of uh, um, um, framed. It's, a, it's, a, it's a become a gateway, go into the museum campus. And, and there's a road uh, underneath the museum. We make a big arch. So the museum like a, a floating bridge with, with a public plaza underneath. <clears throat> so there's a, there's a, a central plaza uh, um, well, actually, where it uh, in in underneath the museum, and uh, when, once you enter from here, you can you can see the sky, and then you can you can go up to the to the to the exhibition floor, and then you can further go up to the outdoor terrace. So so we try to lift the building so we can free up a lot of. Uh, shaded public space and underneath the building, around the building, at the same time create another uh, level of, um, of a roof garden on the top. And uh, 
again, uh, the sky. We, so this is very important to me that, uh, that we make this a frame that look a little bit uh, classic, um, classic the, in terms of the scale and the, the shape, um, but it's abstract. A last project uh, about the sky. This is a, a proposal in New York City, uh, a tower. So go back to, so to my origin, the, 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 the several uh, projects I talked about before. There are many of them was about the high-rise building. Uh, New York was the hometown for high-rise building. Uh, so we proposed this one, the black one, next to the Empire State Building. It's a, it's a small, it's not super tall, uh, but very skinny. And um, it's a barely stand. It's a, it's, uh, it's a feel, feels like I just touch this uh, location temporarily. And um, it doesn't want to be a monument. And even the top become transparent and disappearing into the sky. So you could call this a t the tallest building because it's a connect to the sky. There's no, there's no height. Um, uh, but at the same time, it's trying to talk to the, to the, to the height, to the, to the sky above, above it. So... <clears throat> Um, so that's uh, the image. Um, I think uh, I would uh, I, I would uh, um, discuss about how to, how to make a high rise, but doesn't trying to um, be a monument. Um, how how we you know, not uh, make, you know, because when I look at the very heavy tower, very masculine or pointing ones, I think they do that with intention. Um, so I don't think, I think it's nothing wrong to make a big buildings, especially in Asia. The density needs you to make big cities and big uh, space. But but I think that there's always a way to to put the 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 the, uh, the, the relationship between human and nature. Uh, it's not physical relationship, but emotional relationship. Put this in the center of the project um, to learn from the history. In that's what I uh, 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 that's what I uh, inspire from the gardens, from from those historical heritage that, uh, you know, we listed them. We list them, them not because they're old, not because they're, they're green buildings. Of course, they're sustainable buildings, but uh, they are re really uh, inspiring and sustainable because they're cultural um, uh, sustainable, that they can uh, keep um, uh, influence us on how we should uh, look at our environment and uh, the world. Thank you very much. We'll get we'll get situated here for the last conversation of the uh, of the conference. I, I wanted to start with a question about clients um, and the kinds of approaches and inquiries you get from potential clients. Given how much is possible, sort of instantaneously, almost in in China. Um, given what you said, your own comment about some of the landscapes you see them now with your buildings and the men you wish. You, you think maybe it'd be better without any architecture there. Mm -hmm. And given what Rainer de Graaf said last night about how many of these new towers, like the one you ended with, are sort of just vessels to sometimes to pour equity into mm -hmm. as much as they are places to live. Um, do you ever say no to clients? What are those relationships like when you get a, you must get a, such a variety of inquiries? Yeah, there, there's how often a, do you say no? There's a moment I really feel panic. I, I feel... Oh, I cannot handle so much, uh, out of control. And then there's a one time, there Toito came to my office. I asked him. I said, oh, uh, uh, "Too, too much, too much. I cannot handle." He says, "If I were you, I'd do everything I can." Uh, and then I, I thought, I, then I think that's maybe true. That that was a moment I tried to turn down the the uh, the mountain project. 
And then I thought, if I don't do it, somebody else will, will do that anyway. So we're actually, architects are actually doing projects with a condition. You know, you, you work under the urban framework and there, there's a condition. You have to, um, so, I, so, I, so that's why I said that's um, probably a challenge for me. If I can solve this, um, probably in the future people won't at least build a box in the, in the beautiful scenery. The, the park, the volcano project, actually they were, I had the opportunity to change the urban planning. They, they were planned a big uh, plaza, big uh, stadium with uh, several urban blocks with the uh, streets. So I said, maybe we should uh, make a big park. So in that case, because that was the last year, I become more, uh, I can s say more things to, to the city. Yeah. So. Hi, um, I, I was really fascinated to hear you talking so much about the context of the buildings. And usually when architects talk about the context or in placing their buildings in the context of the, uh, of the site, they talk about, I guess, resemblance, you know, the way that the building looks like, mm. responds to what's around it, whereas your buildings are kind of really foreign objects in their context. And you talked a little bit about sort of the, maybe the emotional context of the building. I wonder if you could unpack that a little bit in terms of how you explain to clients and how you explain to city officials about the relationship between what you're doing and what's existing. It's really depending on different uh, contexts. Some, some, sometimes the, maybe the context is a chaos or they just need a very strong statement there. But I, I, I have another pro other project. Uh, for example, I have a project in Rome uh, in the city, so it's super low key, but I didn't want to show today because everyone else did um, uh, much better work than I do in that, uh, in that, uh, in that uh, part. But I think uh, um, uh, at the same time, especially place with a, a crisis for identity, they, they're looking for new things. Um, um, so I think the uh, question is how to, how to make new things, but um, um, deeply rooted into this um, history. I don't think a history equals to the past. There must be some continuity. If you, you, know, if you look at our time in 500 years later, you know, or a thousand years later, there's a one continue. There's no moment that, uh, you know, past, uh, modern, there's, there's all, all the continue. So what's new we bring to this uh, flow? I think, but still belongs to, to, the, to the place. That's a question. Um, so, so do you think it would be possible, I'm intrigued to hear more about the Rome project in the sense of making architecture that wasn't kind of so coming forward in its context, but could recede more into the background? How would you apply your approach in that kind of situation? Um, <clears throat> it was an existing building. They want to turn down, it's a modern building, it's not a um, real old building, with a floor, a column, and then um, they want to turn down the building, design a new one. And I win the competition because I said, uh, keep the structure, keep keep all this, but insert a new element into, the, into this uh, bookshelf. So if you go closer, the, the, the difference happens in the macro scale, the human scale, but overall the urban scale is uh, it's, uh, coming from existing urban. So they proved, they, but it lasts for many years, or seven, uh, seven eight years, it's so slow, I don't know. They, they say that's the uh, Italian speed. I have a question about craft and construction, actually getting these projects built. One of the interesting elements of really forward-looking, digitally produced work is that it's often the most labor-intensive to build and requires the most craft and the most attention to mm -hmm. that kind of craft because you're often delivering designs to 
builders who haven't built that way before. So I'm curious what kinds of instructions you give on the, on the more parametric or digitally derived projects and to what extent you can, um, to what extent you're involved in that project, in that process of sort of monitoring a, a building of that type as it's being built. And whether that changes depending on whether you're working in China or somewhere else. I feel, I feel in maybe, um, for, for example, the Harbin Opera House, the, the construction quality was uh, really good. They, uh, but the, the Erdos Museum, the bubble, the big bubble, that, that we built uh, 10 years ago, almost 10 years ago, there's some problem. Um, because the contractor, they improved. At that moment, there's nobody ever that, done any uh, irregular buildings before. And they have to study, and they have to build, a, build a, the team. Um, we, but in China, architects doesn't have a legal right to, you know, you, you cannot say stop, change. You cannot, otherwise I, I don't approve. They just continue. They have a, they have a, um, a deadline. They have to finish. So they just continue. And we, we go there, we say, this is not so good. Maybe you should change, you should. They don't listen. <laughs> and then one day, the, the lucky thing happened. One uh, panel, they flip off. The wind come and then boom, and then there is uh, this is some quality, quality issue. You have to redo everything, and they oh, they they become more serious, and then they take things off and they have to redo. Then we took this opportunity to correct the shape, otherwise it doesn't look smooth. But in the uh, Harbin uh, Opera House, the, they they have each panel with a barcode. Um, digitalize uh, the, the whole process, you know, very professional. Is that something your office produces now? I'm wondering how your process in the office no, has changed I, in terms of no, delivering No, actually, messages. I don't want to be digital. I, they al always uh, ask me to go to some parametric design thing. I never go. I, 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 in fact, in the Harbin Opera House, all these wood panels, we, 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 we designed this uh, um, more like a handcraft detail. So the building has a, has a human touch. I don't like a machine. Um, that's the thing. Um, I, I, I always think uh, technology can help us to, to, to do whatever we want, not to limit us to do certain things. Yeah. I think uh, Lucas Museum is going to be really great. The, the panels, the facade I've seen. It's really, really new, new technology. Um, one, one of the things that's really remarkable looking at the body of work that you produce is to do re really substantial, really large, complex projects from very early on. Um, and, but sprinkled in amongst them are these very small projects. And you, uh, you kind of I find myself asking the question, why does he bother? What's the attraction of doing little things when, you, the, when you're kind of having to exert the effort that's required for those huge, complex projects? I do architecture because I, I believe it can change people, how people receive or the, the story or the, how they... It's like they, people, you want to, if you're a writer, you want to re, uh, write something that people can remember and they can... After they read, they can maybe have change the, the, the perspective of something. So it doesn't matter you write a poem or a or large book. Um, Sometimes the, the large book takes uh, too much time. Buildings take uh, seven years, <laughs> ten years sometimes. It's too long. And you will lose more uh, when you do a larger project. Smaller project, you can control better. It's, uh, but, um, so I, I'm uh, having fun to. to One do. last question for me is about the Lucas Museum. Um, <coughs> that project, as some, some of the audience will know, was originally um, designed perhaps for Chicago, then for San Francisco, yeah. then it moved to Los Angeles, where, as you showed, it's under construction. I think we're all excited to see how it turns out in LA. I'm curious about the relationship between the building as kind of container for this collection and the, con and the collection itself. Uh, because your work is, is quite abstract, um, fr seen from a certain point of view, and the work in the collection is, as you mentioned, sort of now gathered together under the, 
uh, under the name narrative art, but it's a lot of figurative art, a lot of Norman Rockwell, mm. as well as a lot of pieces from the history of Hollywood and George Lucas's own career. I'm curious about the relationship and how you thought about that building as a container for a very particular kind of collection that's really the, ap the opposite of abstraction. George, George Lucas has made a point of saying that he doesn't collect that sort of art. He collects art that, mm. that tells a story that has a, that has a kind of narrative impulse. I think it's the same reason I, I decided to do this kind of architecture in this city context. So also it doesn't follow the surrounding um, as a whole. I think uh, um, as an institution uh, for young people, maybe, like I said uh, about the uh, black hole, m maybe it's important to, to drag a space um, for people to fall into a uh, different time, or they, they find these uh, uh, things doesn't match, <laughs> but uh, they were wondering what could happen. Uh, same thing for the interior. If, if, um, if they know the collection, and they will expecting the space um, for the collection. Uh, maybe they will lose the uh, they will lose the expect uh, the expectation or, or some curiosity. Um, but it doesn't mean we don't care about the collection. The the, the we. We control the light. Uh, we we open the space where we want. We close it when we we control the height. So so the scale wise, because a lot of collections are small, uh, smaller smaller piece. So we, so we'll think about how to uh, introduce another scale uh, inside the cloud. So there's um yeah. Well, I think we should probably leave it there. Please join me in thanking Ma Yan Song. Thank you. For terrific work.